We increasingly have testimonies of people who have near-death experiences, but then return to their body. What is this state of having left your body? What about when you no longer have a body and brain to return to? What remains of you? There are many aspects to this phenomena we call consciousness. The bit we might call the real me. We have different states of consciousness and it's complex, a mystery, but we know these two states, for instance. The first is the cognitive calculating part of our consciousness that we're most aware of. The second is a dream state part of our consciousness, where our cognitive consciousness is suspended and we access this through sleep, but also through meditation and other practices. It seems the body and brain is both a container and an expression of that consciousness. You express the real you through your brain and your body. So we understand dying as the function of the body and brain ceasing. But what about the consciousness? What can we learn from the Hebraic sacred texts about the body and brain, the consciousness or real me, and the process of dying? There was a king called Shlomo, translated in English as Solomon. He was considered the wisest person in living memory. We read of other rulers coming to learn from him. He spent a large part of his life gathering wisdom sayings and trying to understand things. In the text, he says this. He symbolically describes a silver cord, some kind of energetic reality that connects the body and the brain and the deeper part of your consciousness, spirit that on dying is cut, so that your spirit, your consciousness, the real you, leaves your body. The real you separates from the material that we call body and brain and goes on to exist in a different layer of reality. What is this state of having left your body We increasingly have testimonies of people who have near-death experiences. People who died for a short time, but then returned to their body. They describe experiencing otherworldly realities, and they're very much conscious during this. But what about when you no longer have a body and brain, to return to? What remains of you? Perhaps these people's experiences are the dying hallucinations of a brain-body consciousness. Another story within the ancient texts is of a man called Shmuel, Samuel, being called up from the dead long after his body has died. A king, a man named Saul, calls Samuel's consciousness up from the dead for help. He uses the help of someone who understands these things and can access the layers of reality where Shmuel's consciousness remains. It works. From the account, you can see that Shmuel is recognisable. He's able to express himself even without a body and still be recognised. His personality is intact. He's able to do what he did whilst in a body. That is, he prophesies and tells Saul what will happen to him. 
In these other layers of reality, Shmuel is occupied with something else. He is still doing something that he was not wanting to leave, but it seems he chooses to in order to respond to Saul's request. We see the same thing with Yeshua, Jesus, on a mountain when two people appear and converse with Yeshua. The followers are able to know that they are Moshe and Elahu. These two long dead are able to express themselves even without a physical body and be recognized, even though these followers have never seen them with their own eyes. It seems the sheer force of their personality energy communicates who they are telepathically. Moshe and Eliyahu are clearly different from each other. Their individuality is intact. They are doing something. They're taking an interest in the life and coming death of Yeshua. It seems that they want to learn. The ancient Hebraic texts, carefully crafted by many people over many centuries, reveal an understanding that is still on the fringes of our psychological understanding and our neurological understanding at this present time. These texts reveal that your consciousness goes from being housed in a frozen light body that we call our bodies and brains to being housed in an energetic light body called spirit. You remain within deeper layers of reality that are not accessible with our body-housed cognitive consciousness. There are deeper layers of reality where your consciousness goes, where there are already many conscious beings, even many types of beings called the heavenly host. In these deeper layers, your consciousness continues to express itself, continues to be unique, recognizably different from others who are there. Recognizably you. Continues to do things, discover things, perhaps even learn. The neuroscientist Patrick McNamara has written extensively on the neuroscience of spiritual experiences. He talks about how throughout all human history, not just amongst the ancient Hebrews, supernatural beings were at the heart of society. He talks about how a modern Western culture has lost this and stands out in history for it. He describes us having lost the reverence for dreams, yet dreams in history were a fundamental part of understanding what was happening in the whole of reality. Not just physical reality, but the hidden deeper layers of reality. However, he remarks that non-religious people are encountering supernatural agents increasingly these days. One of the ways is through the medium of psychedelic drug experiences. He points out two things. During these experiences with supernatural agents, atheists describe them as absolutely real. They say things like, they definitely do not follow my desires or will. They also say, I believe they exist, whether or not I am interacting with them. These people experience them as ontologically real, that they are truly there and independent of the person seeing them. 
Patrick McNamara also says nothing that we have learned so far suggests that they are mere hallucinations. What to think of them is an open question. He then says that these psychedelic experiences appear to exhibit similar brain patterns to when we are in REM sleep. That is our dreaming state, consciousness. And when involved in an activity like prayer or meditation, the same brain state is there. That's remarkable. So here is the lost knowledge that the ancient Hebrew texts reveal to us. Firstly, we don't die in the Western understanding of ceasing to exist. Our bodies die, but we live on and without the encumbrance of the body and brain. A body that can pull us away from the layer of reality we access in the dream REM state. A body that can get us focused on material reality, none of which we can take into the deeper dimensions. We carry on being and doing and growing in the deeper layers of reality that undergird this one. Secondly, we have access now to these deeper layers of reality where we can interact with conscious personalities that are not in physical bodies. We do this through the dream state part of our consciousness, now, before we leave our bodies. We can be focused on material reality with our cognitive consciousness, but we can also switch to these deeper layers with our dream state through sleep and prayer and meditation. And thirdly, that that invisible layer of reality is greater than this reality. It persists in a way that this layer does not. It is saying that the very nature of our known reality is underpinned by this greater invisible reality. And then it says that at the deepest layer of reality is not just a force, not just an energy, but a personality who holds all things together. The writer of a large part of what we call the New Testament, someone who hated Christians, yet changed his whole life course after he had an experience with the post-death Christ. He said, there is one, the greatest one, who is in the deepest layer, who we might call Father, because it is not just a force, but a personality with a name, who is over all reality and is working through all of reality and is sustaining all all of reality. And the translation of this one's name into English is I am. So perhaps there is nothing more crucial than to develop that state of being that accesses those deeper layers of reality now, whilst we are still in our body and brain because it is not mere hallucination. To learn to move in those layers of reality now, to be in those layers now, to grow in those layers of reality now, to open our beings up to the one who is in it all, to commune, to meet with the I am. So you might want to go further and learn how to access these deeper layers of reality yourself. To learn how to do it. And perhaps you'll find 
this video helpful. 